My name is Tohoyen Yomesiri. I'm the CEO of Nazaru. Nazaru is a U.S. company um, that focuses on increasing U.S. and Africa trade. And I have with me today Donna Smith, the immediate past CEO of Tyson Foods. Um, Donnie, can you tell us a little bit about you and your background? Sure. Well, I started with the company back in 1980, so I've had a 36-year career in the food business. Uh, it's been a great experience because I really had the opportunity to have several different careers, but all within the same company. So I started off in poultry production. Uh, from there, uh, moved into commodity purchasing, so buying the grains, and working with the railroads and that sort of thing. Um, and from there, had the opportunity to get involved in supply chain management. So I learned a lot about logistics and how important logistics is to a business. Uh, from there, the career sort of moved around a little bit. I had some uh, computer systems uh, uh, and, and technology uh, stuff going on for a few years. And then ended up uh, in our retail business and then in food service before becoming of the company CEO. Wow. Just for the viewers watching from around the world, could you give us a sense of the size of the company, the portfolio, you know, Tyson Foods? Yeah, Tyson Foods uh, has sales of around $40 billion U.S. today, maybe a little more. Um, the company has uh, about 125,000 team members around the world, most here in the U.S. Uh, the, it's, it's primarily a protein-based food company uh, with beef, pork, chicken, and then uh, a segment called prepared foods, which could be anything from lunch meat to a pizza topping to the pizza crust itself. So very diversified food company with a very broad reach. In America today, about one out of every five pieces of beef, pork, or chicken would be produced by Tyson Foods. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a big company. It's a big company. Yeah. And I hear, you know, ever since you left, and uh, you've leaned in to Africa. You've been more active. Yeah. Um, why Africa and why now? And could you tell us a little bit about um, your projects in Africa? Yeah, so um, my heart's been in Africa a long time. Um, I, can't, I can't remember not having some sort of draw or affinity for the continent. Uh, in about 2010, 2011, God kind of stirred my heart and my wife's heart to get involved and, and, and try to help. Now, um, being involved in a food company, naturally hunger is an important part of, of our family's fabric. And so uh, through a connection from a great group called Bridge to Rwanda, we began a work uh, we created a foundation called the African Sustainable Agriculture Project and we began to work in Rwanda to help farmers at the very base of the pyramid uh, create an opportunity for themselves to have a sustainable business. You know, if you talk about sustainable agriculture, you're really talking about commerce. Can you create a business that <laughs> yes. will sustain itself, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, I remember a, a meeting with the uh, Minister of, of uh, Agriculture, and my initial idea was to do some demonstration farms and that sort of thing. Um, but what she really needed was a feed mill. And so we built the first commercial feed mill in the nation of Rwanda. Uh, it opened in 2014. Uh, today there's about four feed mills, and so farmers in America now have uh, several different choices in being able to, to, to find the feed they need to feed their livestock. And it's so important, you know, there's so, there's so much potential in the genetics, but if you don't have good feed, it's kind of like fuel for a race car, right? right. You've got to have quality feed to, to get the potential out of those genetics. Right. So that's sort of a, of a, a base uh, ability right. that a farmer needs to be successful. Right. Um, re following along that, um, we, were, we were in the commercial layer business, so table eggs, and some of those uh, get sold to a group through the Anglican Church called OneEgg.org. Great organization, and what they do is understanding that many preschool children in Rwanda, but in lots of other geographies around the world, they really don't get protein. Mm. And so that stunts the physical and cognitive development, right? And so One Egg's mission is to use an egg a day at preschool okay. to get that seven grams of protein into those children. And it's remarkable 
how much seven grams of protein a day will do for the cognitive and the physical development of, of young preschool wow. children. Uh, we've just recently, through a grant with USAID, uh, started a new project around broiler chickens, so the chickens that you actually eat, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and again, it's, it's, it's focused on the base of the pyramid okay. where we provide the initial capital that they need to build the coop, or we actually build the coop for them and provide them all the equipment they need on what is essentially a three-year no-interest loan. Okay. Right? And then they will get a micro loan for the reoccurring cost, the feed, the chicks, that sort of thing. And then at the end of the grow out, then they'll make, you know, pay off their micro loan and then make a capital payment. And then the money that they have left over can go towards things like school supplies, medicine, improving their diet, which is a huge factor in what we're trying to do is to help get more protein right. into the Rwandan diets. So uh, off to a good start, yeah. uh, great partners with University of Tennessee where I went to college and USAID and of course ASAP oh, Zamora. Wow. Uh, so those are the philanthropic efforts that we're doing but also this year uh, we as a family decided to become commercially involved awesome. in Africa yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, now, with my background in the poultry business, it sort of made sense for me to be in poultry. Um, and uh, with a company called Buckin, which is actually based out of Mauritius, but, but it's uh, managed out of South Africa, we have a business that basically sells Dale chicks and feed and the supplements that a farmer might need, again, to those growers at the base of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So we may be selling 100 chickens and two bags of feed you know, at a time versus a large integrated right, right. You know, business that we may be more familiar with in the U.S. So um, have begun the investment. <laughs> uh, we're beginning to expand our operations in Tanzania, and I'm really, really excited about helping create affordable food solutions oh my gosh. in Africa. It's so important. Yes, absolutely. And as I listen to you, you're doing something in a unique way. I'm, I'm, I'm finding out that the strategy you're developing is actually a strategy that will work yeah. and is working. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, um, I see people that mean well, but they go in with a, a different mindset, mm -hmm. not listening yeah. to what's actually needed on ground. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, as, you, as you continue to also develop beyond the, the, the bottom of the pyramid, as yeah. you said, what do you see at the middle of the pyramid? Do, do, you, do you foresee yourself moving in that space? Yeah, I think the, uh, I think the economic growth potential of Africa is huge. Hmm. Uh, I think we're going to need to be patient, though, about how quickly it expands. Now, uh, think about it. Think about the economy in America in you know the early 1900s you know pre-depression and where we are today vastly different and took 30 or 40 50 years to develop right, right. I, I think sometimes we take a overly aggressive approach <laughs> at how quickly the african economies yeah. the economies are going to jump to a let's call it a postmodern level but if you'll take some patience and just, and just listen mm -hmm. and understand where you can plug in. Right. We will be a part of an integrated chicken business that grows and develops across Africa over the next 20 or 30 years. Awesome. I may not see it all, but my kids will, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. I think that's so important. And, and you know, fortunately, we have places that we can look, the US, Europe, Brazil, to see how it will develop, right? right? And then apply that knowledge to what happens in Africa to speed that development along. Yes, and, and I think when you say patience, um, I think that's something I need to, <laughs> to, to learn. Yeah. Because honestly, I actually feel like um, it's going to take less time than it is being projected. Here's why. 20 years ago, you know, we wanted to go to China. Mm -hmm. 20 years after, mm -hmm. who is not in China? Yeah. Um, my own personal prediction that it's going to take Africa less time. Here's oh, why. Right. I, well, <laughs> here's why. Here's why I think if more Africans in diaspora, I mm. think that's the secret sauce. Yeah. People like myself, 
Yeah. If we take a more active role in the growth of the continent, I think that's the catalyst. Yeah. Here's why. You know, over the last almost five years, I worked with Walmart, the largest, you know, leading retailer in the world, yeah. developing supply chain strategy, right. technology strategy, merchandising. I now have the expertise yeah. that I can offer Africa, and that's what I'm doing now. Awesome. I feel like if more people like myself, I think one of the statistics out there with Nigeria in particular is that ev in f every five African, one of them is a Nigerian. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere in the world, you're going to find Africans yeah. in the top places, in corporate America, corporate Europe, wh wherever. Mm. If those individuals arise, and take on a more active role because now they, they're equipped with skills, with talent. They can speak the US side, they can speak the African side. That's one of the conversations I'm also having in my own community yeah. is what are you doing for Africa? I think, you know, largely the future of Africa has to rest in the hands of African. Oh, I believe so, absolutely. So, yeah. so I know patience is yeah. something, <laughs> um, but I, I see my role as a catalyst. Yeah. Let's Good. keep this thing up. Let's yeah. have the conversations. Let's learn from experts like you, yeah. with your connection, with your view of the world. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I feel like the region is blessed yeah. for someone like you to feel called oh, yeah. um, to the region you know, some of the other um, leaders, Scott Ford, yeah. Leo Dawson, they're all leaning in. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm excited. And there's good reason. I mean, you know, if you think about from a food perspective, yes. you think about the continent yes. between now and 2050, population is probably going to double. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So food production is going to have to more than double yes. because you've got many geographies that have. 40, 50 percent of the population yes. that's food insecure. Yes. So we got to go pick them up. Absolutely. And then we've got to make sure that we don't lose anybody along the way from a food insecurity yes. standpoint as the population doubles. That's a huge opportunity yes. economically and commercially as well as I guess philosophically around you know pr providing and helping to create these sustainable affordable food solutions that are going to be so critical to Africa's growth. Absolutely. And, and honestly, you're one of the very few people that is thinking this way. Um, and I love it. We need more people thinking ab about Africa from a business context. Mm. And that's one of the things I say. You yeah. need to, to develop what's your Africa strategy. Yeah. And I also, part of the message I'm taking to corporate America is if a U.S. business doesn't develop an effective Africa strategy, they're actually positioning themselves to miss out, to miss out on the economic growth that you just described. Yeah, and, and I think it's, I think it's uh, at least interesting, <laughs> yes. more than likely important to note. Uh, today, there are some structural barriers that make business in Africa, I'm going to say, more difficult yes. than in other parts of the geography. You know, we're very fortunate in the U.S. to have the transportation system that we have, yes, right? It, yes. and, and things can move very quickly from one part of the country to another. Not so much in Africa. No. It's very difficult right. and very expensive. But you know what? That is a problem <laughs> that will get fixed in order to create economic growth. It's, it's a hurdle that's just got to be crossed. Uh, and, and folks are working today on the energy grid. Right? And there's lots of projects all over the continent to provide more, you know, not just more electricity, but more electricity that's predictable. It's mm -hmm. very seldom that I go into a large, you know, populated area and I'll always go to grocery stores and look around. It's, it's, it's very likely that while I'm in that store, the power's going to go out right. for a few minutes, right? right? right. Those, but those things will get fixed. People are putting effort and attention on those. And those are some of those underlying uh, factors that, that need to improve right. in order for that economic growth to really accelerate. Now, it'll grow. Yes. But it'll only grow as fast as you can get from point A to point B. When you can get from point A to point B faster, the economic growth will go faster. Absolutely. Now, there's no, there's no lack of will. 
There's no lack of effort. There's no lack of, of, of knowledge. I mean, we, 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 there are some skills that we need that need to be developed and, and employed in Africa. Uh, but but it is, there is no lack of, of effort or work ethic to get things done. It's just we need to help, number one, provide this infrastructure that, that just moves business along faster and then help teach those skills that are so important to grow in a business. And you know what? If I've, if, if I've got two or three dependencies in a business, <laughs> Teaching business skills, yeah. we'll win at that. And that's why because I, we have willing yeah, students. We need more people like yeah. you. How do we get more people like you? <laughs> I hope we can so, too. So, so yeah, um, you know, and and this is why I, I really am now bringing the conversation here to Bentonville, Arkansas. Yeah. Um, we'll be hosting an event called the Trade with Africa Business Summit, May 10th and May 11th of 2018. Um, exactly because we need to have this conversation. I need to learn from you. We need more people to lean in and we're going to continue that conversation at that event. So we, we welcome other people from around the world to, to join us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating opportunity, not without its challenges, uh, but so worth the effort. And I'm looking forward uh, to joining with other, you know, business leaders from, frankly, all over the world here in Bentonville yes. to get involved in the conversation yes. and to help try to bridge the gap on some of these gaps that we face that will make economic development in Africa speed along much more quickly.